another episode of the Focus TV. Join as always. We got Octavia Wyatt, Carter with Dudley Jr., Raymond Lines, and Wilson Tarpe Jr. And um, look, we got quite a bit to get through tonight. Um, some what is officially Week One of the NFL season. Can't wait to see what you have to uh, share, Octavius, or pertains to the NFC East. Uh, DC United told you guys what, what type of thing they're in. Similar to the Mystics, both trying to make the postseason, and they're go, each going through their own respective struggles. And then we're going to close things out with rapid fire, as always. That said, um, Octavia, the floor is yours. Uh, it's almost time for the best part of the year. I'm super excited that... We're basically, what, a day and a half away from football? Or you want to say two days? It's technically uh, one more full day and then another one. So, yeah, two days away from football. Um, finally in the home stretch, season opening game this Thursday, Kansas City, as well as the Detroit Lions will go one-on-one. -on -one. Um, although there's been some news coming out of the Kansas City Chiefs uh, today that was – very concerning if they weren't already concerned enough with Chris Jones still in a holdout. Um, right now they're dealing with potential knee injury to Travis Kelsey. Um, we're hoping, you know, that it's nothing too serious because of course we want everybody to be healthy. Um, last I heard, um, they said ACL is still intact. Um, so hopefully they, they said, they'll, you know, see how he got, he does throughout the rest of the week and see if we'll be able to play on Thursday. Um, but they don't have much time, but here in the NFC East, we're finally getting ready for the season. We do have two teams going up against each other for their first divisional game um, this Sunday night, which will be the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. So they will meet Sunday night at 820. Um, but we'll start with the hometown team, the Washington Commanders. Their first game is going to be against the Arizona Cardinals at 1 o'clock. Um, some recent news coming out of, uh, I guess, FedEx Field is, on Thursdays, the Commanders announced a $40 million upgrade in FedEx Field um, with new ownership. You had to believe that that was coming, um, and it's probably well warranted <laughs> um, with some of the things that we've seen in the past at FedEx Field. Um, now, I heard a couple of things like upgrading to some upgrading some of the suites. I'm not sure about the whole infrastructure infrastructure that they're going to be upgrading, but they have a lot of things apparently coming down the pipeline. Um, and they have already officially announced they have a week one sellout, um, which does not happen a lot at FedEx Field. And when it does happen at FedEx Field, it's probably because the away team bought a lot of tickets as well. Um, but they're very confident that it's going to be more Washington Commanders fans. I guess their take on it is that Cardinal fans don't travel that well. Um, I know one Cardinal saying that travels well, but he might be alone in that part at this point. I don't know how well he travels anymore, um, but I did know one. Um, so, yeah, congratulations to them. We'll see how that split is um, in their week one matchup with the Cardinals. Um, just some things to look forward to in the season. Um, some stats that ESPN is uh, uh, putting out there for some of these teams' projections. So as of now, ESPN's FBI chances for the Washington Commanders to win the NFC East is a whopping 5%. Um, their chances to make the playoffs is 18%. Their projected win total is 6.7 games. And they have the ninth, the ninth hardest strength of schedule. Um, so that's not hard to see why those projections are a little bit low. Um, they currently have them ranked 26th in their power rankings of all 32 teams. Um, so they have a lot, of course, that they need to work on. They were the only team in the NFC East last year that did not reach the playoffs. Um, probably some of my biggest questions, well, my biggest question that I'm going to be looking forward to for them this year is just to see the impact of Eric bien on the offense. Um, I just think Eric bien is a hell of a coach. Um, we all believe he probably should be a head coach by now. Um, so to see him move over just to be another offensive coordinator taking on a basically a rookie quarterback, Sam Howell played in what two games last year, um, a redone offensive line. And they have pretty good offensive personnel, you know, with Terry McLaurin, who also we haven't heard too much about the toe injury. So I'm interested to see how that works out. We know who they have in the backfield and Brian Robinson Jr. and Antonio Gibson. And then the tight end is Logan Thomas going to be healthy. And then, of course, on the other side of the ball, I'm really just looking forward to see how Chase Young reacts and, and bounces back off of the injury that he had last year. 
Um, and, you know, apparently there's still some word that he has, I believe, a shoulder stinger of some sort. So who knows what his health is at this moment. So there's still a lot of question marks. How Sam Howell will adjust to actually being a starting quarterback. I mean, they did well in the preseason going 3-0. and But we all know going 3-0 and in the preseason means nothing when it comes down to the actual season. Um, because a lot of teams were not playing their number one guys. And week one, everybody's in there and they're ready to go. Um, I probably think that their biggest weakness is, is going to be their offensive line. Um, last year we saw as much as Carson Wentz was running for his life. Um, Sam Howell did a little bit of that as well in the first preseason game. Um, they were able to kind of protect him a little bit more as they went through preseason. But again, they, they weren't playing number ones. Um, now in their first game against the Cardinals, they might not have a true test because we know the Cardinals are on a fire sale right now. Looks like they're tanking for Caleb Williams as, as <laughs> right now. Um, so we'll see how that shakes out. But um, you never know. Crazier things have happened at FedEx Field. So <laughs> you'll never be surprised when it comes down to it. But it should be an interesting game um, for their first game of the season. Probably a good, I guess you want to say a warm-up game if you think about what the Arizona Cardinals are going through right now currently. Um, so we'll see how that shakes out for them. But that will be their first game of the season for the Washington Commanders. Next, we'll go over to the Dallas Cowboys. <clears throat> the Dallas Cowboys, as I've already noted, they will be playing against the Giants Sunday night, 8-20, uh, first Sunday night game of the year. So that's putting both of those teams on a big platform, um, which I do believe that the NFC East has, um, has earned. Um, last year was a really good year for the NFC East, so they deserve some more primetime games. Um, so, you know, good for them. Uh, <clears throat> as far as the ESPN ranking or projections that they have, ESPN FBI chances to win the NFC East for the Dallas Cowboys is a 33% chance. Chances of making the playoffs at 68%. Projected win total, 9.5. And they currently have the 11th hardest strength of schedule. They have them ranked um, in their power rankings at number 10. Um, so in the top 10 in the league. Um, and yeah. Probably my biggest question is how much rope is Mark Mc Mike McCarthy going to have? Um, we know he's called plays in the past, um, but I feel like Jerry's looking for any reason to just go ahead and put that interim tag on Dan Quinn if, if Mike McCarthy keep act up when it comes down to running these plays just because we know how difficult it was for him last year to just not even run plays, just to be a regular head coach and not really have too many responsibilities as far as um, that aspect of the game. And we know how they've been as far as time management at times. So I'm interested to see how he's going to be able to balance everything. But we've seen him do it before in Green Bay. I'm just interested to see if he's going to be able to do it again. Um, also, just, of course, the biggest question mark also is how Dak will be. You know, I don't think he'll have a down year like he did last year, if you want to consider last year a down year, even though I think probably people consider it a down year just because of the interceptions. So that's probably the only thing that a lot of people are looking at. Um, but we know that there are other caveats. You know, he's coming up on a contract negotiation soon um and then with the adding of trey lance behind him you know i don't know how much added pressure that is going to be on him even though we know trey lance is not at this present moment a formidable you know replacement we know he has a lot of upside but he hasn't had a lot of playing time um so i'll be very confused and and surprised if we see him if that does struggle um but i don't think he'll be too bad um, and then my other question is just how explosive will the, off, the new offensive personnel players be when you have Brandon Cooks coming over, when you have Tony Pollard coming off of that ankle foot injury that he had and now being the number one guy with no more Zeke Elliott in the room and just seeing how much of a role will, you know, the Deuce Vaughns and the Rico Dottles uh, behind him do because it was interesting having, you know, Zeke and Tony as a one-two punch, but now where are you going to get that second kind of hard hitting runner from. So interested to see how that shakes out for them. Um, another probably biggest weakness that I think that a lot of teams, not just in the NFC East, but a lot of teams in the NFL period have is just the offensive line depth. You know, you pretty much have good offensive line players, one through five. Um, but what happens if one of those goes down? As we know, offensive linemen get hurt a lot because they get rolled up on in those packs. Um, and you never know what goes on underneath at the bottom of those things, we've seen a lot of ankles get rolled up and we've seen a lot of things to transpire when it comes down to that. So just seeing if they're going to be able to stay healthy, you know, Zach Martin's back, Tyron Smith, 
Um, you know, he's had some injuries, Terrence Steele and all of them have had some injuries in the past. So just how healthy they can stay and, you know, how they'll be able to, you know, stay healthy for the year. And if they're going to have good depth behind them, maybe there's a breakout person that we haven't heard about too much. And we'll see how that shakes out for them as the time goes on. Um, and then, of course, just my last thing that I'm looking forward to with them, of course, is just seeing how Michael Parsons plays just because it's Michael Parsons. He's kind of it's kind of amazing, even though I hate to admit it. Um, he's a great player. Um, you know, he's itching to be defensive player of the year. Um, he, he wants it. So I'm interested to see how hard he plays and, you know, how much he's able to separate himself from the other notable defensive player of the year candidates. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that works out for them, but they'll be playing again Sunday night against the Giants. Um, and we'll go to the Giants now. Um, Giants, of course, Sunday night, 820 against the Cowboys. Um, for the ESPN uh, <clears throat> stats that they have, they currently have them at an 11% chance to win the NFC East. They have a 36% chance to make the playoffs. Their projected win total is 7.9 games. And they have the 10th hardest strength of schedule. They have them ranked in their rankings at 19. So in the top 20, another team from the NFC East that made the playoffs last year. So they're looking to follow up a season that, Many said probably they exceeded their expectations last year. So I'm interested to see how Dable, who was coach of the year last year, follows up his second season there. Um, how much have the other players bought into the program going forward, even more from last year? And just are they able to kind of, you know, get over the whole Saquon Barkley ordeal that happened all last offseason um, and seeing how they're able to just possibly put together another good year for them and get into the playoffs? Um Again, like most teams in the NFL, how will their offensive line be? Um, their pass blocking, you know, they have had notoriously a, an issue with offensive linemen in the past. So that's pretty much always they're going to be their question mark just to see what goes on there. Um, and then also there are their new offensive personnel players as well. Um, you know, you have Darren Waller coming over. And basically Isaiah Hodgins is the number one wide receiver from looking at their depth chart. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So seeing how, you know, he had a pretty decent and strong year last year, if he's able to circle that back up, as you guys know, Sterling Shepard is also one of my favorites. Is he able to stay healthy? Um, and is he able to, you know, provide some assistance to Daniel Jones, who's going to have to spread the ball around? Um, we all know what Saquon can do. Um, and I know he's going into this season with a chip on his shoulder as well. Um, to prove that he's worth more than what he was given with this one-year contract that he was able to agree with the Giants on. Um, so I'm going to see how ready he is for the season. We know he didn't get a whole lot of training camp. Well, he did. I take that back. He signed the day of training camp, so um, but not too many off-season workouts and things of that sort. So, But as long as he's healthy, I don't see any <laughs> downfall for him. Um, so we'll see how that shakes out for them. And last but not least, we'll go to the Philadelphia Eagles. They will have their first game um, on Sunday at 425 versus the New England Patriots, um, which to me, looking at their schedule, the, the Eagles schedule, there's, they only have two one o'clock games, two or three one o'clock games the entire year, which to me is crazy because as we know in the NFC East, pretty much they all play at one o'clock unless you're in a primetime slot. Um, most of their games are either on primetime on a Thursday, Saturday night, Monday, or at 425, um, uh, are you, of course, just guessing just off of the year they had last year. But I just think it's crazy they really only have, like, two, which is wild. Um, their ESPN chances right now to win the NFC East is a 52% chance. Um, their chance to make the playoffs is 82%. Projected win totals at 10.3. And they have the 12th hardest strength of schedule. Um, they currently have them in their power rankings at ranked four, um, which – I don't know how much I agree with, but I'm biased, of course. Um, I'm saying two at most, but okay. Um, <laughs> so probably for me, the biggest question marks and things I'm looking for next year is, or this season is just, can they do it again? You know, can they have a solid season like they had last year? And I, when I say solid, I don't even mean as, if you want to say gaudy as it was last year with the win streak and I mean, they didn't lose the game until I don't even remember what game they lost to the, the commanders as their first loss of the season. I don't even think I need that. I just want to see if they're able to, you know, win the games they're supposed to win and also just um, 
put up a fight in the games that maybe is a toss up because again, they have a lot harder schedule this year than they did last year. Um, I'm interested to see how the new coordinators will work. We lost both of our coordinators and Jonathan Gannon and Shane Steichen to new coaching positions for both of them in Indianapolis and Arizona. Um, so granted, um, the new offensive coordinator, Brian Johnson was a, the quarterbacks coach last year. So not too much of a t- difference, but Sean Desai coming over from Chicago, bringing a new system over there with him. Um, and then of course, losing a lot of defensive players, defensive starters, um, and seeing how the, these rookie and second year defensive players will live up to the bill at this point. You know, some of these rookies were would essentially, you know, would think would come in and learn from a lot of veterans. And granted, they are because they have the veterans like Fletch and BG and, and Hassan Reddick and all of that. But a lot of them are going to have to get out there and contribute right away, even in the second year players and the Kobe Dean, who's pretty much going to be wearing the green dot in the linebacker position as well as Jordan Davis, who's going to have a lot on him as well. Um, But I'm super excited to see how Jalen Carter is. We've been hearing great things. Um, I think Darius Slay nicknamed him a baby rhino now, so that's like his nickname. Um, And just seeing how Nolan Smith is going to fare as well, just because we know he's a little bit smaller, but he's very fast and he's very quick. Um, So seeing how much work he'll get as well. Um, I'm interested to see how... The quarterback, I'm not quarterback, uh, running back by committee is going to work out this year. It's kind of been that way the last couple of years as well. Um, but with DeAndre Swift, if he can stay healthy, um, Rashad Penny, Kenneth Gainwell, and Boston Scott. Um, so just seeing how all of that continuously flows. Um, and just hoping that Jalen, you know, continues to improve like he has pretty much throughout his entire football career. Um and can just live up to if you want to call it hype now or whatever you want to call it because, you know, last year he probably didn't have a bullseye on him in the beginning of the season like he does now. So just seeing if he's able to live up to that. Um, probably biggest weakness is going to be on the defensive side and the linebacker in the safety position. Um, that's pretty much where we lost a lot of talent, um, where we didn't have a whole lot of depth. Um, so is not Kobe Dean ready for it? Is Zach Cunningham coming in late? Is he going to be ready for it after – um miles jack who they also signed retired unexpectedly um and then on the safeties you know i'm really high on sydney brown seeing how much work he's going to really get uh opposite of reed blankenship who was also a rookie last year so they have a lot of rookie second year players that really have to step into big roles for all to really work out and there's a lot of eyes on them so just looking forward to see if they're going to be able to keep it together um play their game and make the first repeat nfc east champion in i don't know how many years like i think 10 ish i think the last no like maybe more than that because i think the last one was 2004 um so it's been a very long time since there's been a repeat champion in the nfc east so we'll see how that works out um i'm super excited the season's here um and yeah it's pretty much all i got this week yeah, I'm sure everybody's happy that is officially here. Um, you know, been watching a lot of my folks go crazy, already finishing their fantasy drafts and all that nonsense already. Yeah, so finish those. It is, it is officially that time of year. You said finish those on your side? Yeah, I'm actually doing four this year, which is the most I've ever done. So a little nervous. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> well, we'll definitely be getting updates from you, not only what happens on, you know, between – the real NFL lines. Also, I'm sure uh, when fantasy goes too far left, you'll let us know as well. Uh, yeah. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a, our first break. When we get back, we'll talk some mystics some DC United. You're watching the Focus TV. Welcome back to the Focus TV. Like we told you guys, we're going to talk some mystics. Uh, the Washington mystics are going through it. Um, <laughs> like it, it, it just continues to get worse uh we know they were having some they had just got Shakira Austin back just got Ariel Atkins back lost both of those women to injuries and then you know they they took a, a heck of a blow um against the Sparks on the road where Chrissy Tyler who's been working to get back all season she comes back as Cardell said during Mystics Outlook you know after that game does something she's done millions of times during her playing career and unfortunately is injured and tears her ACL um, and then not only that, you know, we see Washington lose to the Sparks 
And that puts them in the precarious situation that they're in, which right now, uh, at the time that we're recording this, will be playing Phoenix uh, Mercury tonight. Um, we're looking down a stretch where there's literally three games left. And they're holding on for dear life in the standings. Um, Cardell, looking at these last three games, is, is well, we can start looking at tonight. Um, just what are your thoughts on what has to be done for them to at least take care of business tonight? or we'll put them in the best position to take care of business tonight. Well, the one, a sense of urgency. Um, they got to play defense like they did when they won a couple games and jumped from the eighth seed to, like, the fifth seed and were in control of their destiny. Then they dropped a couple games. And um, plain and simple, their stars need to play better. You know, um, that includes Deladon. I know they got rock with Christie going down, but that's why you're professional. That's why you get paid a lot of money to do what you do. You're supposed to be able to bounce back from that because the other team not going to feel sorry for you. They went over there checking on Christie. All right, let's get back to whooping their ass. You know what I'm saying? And we, we fighting too. It is what it is. Deladon starts with her. She's a franchise player. She got to play better. You know, eight and six last game, but she was 4 14. She's far better than that. Now, Cloud, she hasn't shot well in the last few games. She got to get better in that four fouls. Um, she, she, you know, and, and, you know, even in Sykes, shot pretty decent, 6 of 14. Uh, but her and Cloud, they couldn't do nothing with Canada and uh, Clarendon. Uh, they were in the paint all day. You know, look, about to be in the paint. See what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you had those screens or they was blowing by them. Uh, they had a hard time dealing with that quick backcourt. And then, um, you know, Obviously, it's with Shakira out, you know, it's, it's a bunch of undersized bigs back there. You know, Tiana every now and then to get a block. But Maisha's six feet. Uh, Queen Egbo, uh, she's a reserve or whatnot. It, it, it's just not a lot of resistance back there if um, they get in the paint. And if it is, you know, they do crowd them in the paint. They was kicking it out. And, uh, you know, the Sparks was hitting threes. You know, I think they would, uh, they hit enough threes to keep it honest or whatnot. But, um, Playing the summer, they just need to play better. Shatori Walker Kimbrough, donut. No rebounds, no points, one assist, and 27 minutes over four. You can't afford to have that happen with Ariel being out. Like, you just, that's your, that, <laughs> that's your shooting guard. You know what I mean? Like, you just, you can't, there's no way you're going to win, especially on the road when you're fighting for a playoff spot with another team fighting for a playoff spot and you go old for it. It's just, it's not going to happen. You know, Maisha played better, but she, you know, it's an efficient 5 or 12. You know, outside of that, pretty much everybody, in a sense, kind of did their job. They just need their go-to players, their stars, to step up and do what they're supposed to do. And then they wouldn't even be in this position. Um, you know, it, it's as simple as that. Because you can't – you know, it always kills me when, you know, on the fella side, the stars are playing, I ain't got enough help for the role players. And it's like, dude, you're getting paid all the money to, to cover that up. <laughs> Whatever the team don't have, we're looking at you to cover that up so we can get this W. What are you talking about? And when they start doing that, you know what you got. Now, I'm not saying that the Mystics stars have done that, but uh, they got pulled it together. I mean, what other choice do they have? Because they, they keep dropping games, they will be at the crib. And um, they will have a long time <laughs> to recuperate. And uh, for some players, you know, even overseas is in jeopardy. You know what I'm saying? So uh, this, is, this is a proud franchise from what we've seen them grow to. From the early days, 2013, 2014, when we first started covering the Mystics, um, we can be, I think we both came into Ball's first year. So we grew with that yeah. team before Deladon or a lot of these players even came. So, uh, you know, they got to have some pride. And, 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 you know, tonight, Phoenix, they, they've obviously been eliminated, single-digit uh, single wins. But I'm pretty sure they would love to play spoiler and be like, hey, Mystics, join us on the couch. And watch, you know what I mean? And it doesn't get easier because after this game, you know, you get past the game, you got the dream who's in the playoffs, who you're basically tied with, but they have the tiebreaker. So that's a big game on Friday. Then you end the season with against the New York Liberty. So you can't really can't afford to lose this game. I'm just gonna be honest. You lose this game, it, it, it might be a wrap. You see what I'm saying? And then the way we know it's a ball, things will be changing. Things will be changing. So it's up to them. You know, we're going to see. I'm looking at the stars. I'm not looking at no role players. I'm not looking at the coaching. I'm looking at Deladon, Cloud, Sykes. What y'all going to do? I think that's the right way to look at it. And like you said, uh, they are very proud. And keep in mind, it's something that got brought up at the beginning of the season. You know, 
the core that won the chip, and we know all the ups and downs they've been through, what have you. This is the first season where a bunch of them are looking at free agency. That like it's looking at the possibility of the impending end of this core, you know, of the championship core as currently constructed. And that's just something that happens in sports. Yeah, you can open a window and keep it open, but things change. Like the the core, it's rare that the core stays the same over six, seven years. Um, so that said, that's also something too. So I'm I'm anxious, like Cardo mentioned. I'm anxious to see the response. There better be a sense of urgency tonight. Because again, you it's simply put, you are you are squarely in seventh right now. Um <laughs> Chicago's winning. Chicago is in uh ninth, right? Chicago's putting their hands on Indiana. So Chicago, they win tonight. They're one win closer to messing things up for you. Wow. So like right now they don't have a number in front of them. But the, no. Yeah, but depending on how things shake, and this is what we've been talking about, just those moments, and, and <laughs> they add up. Oh, you just saw the score. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hands. Yeah, I was watching, and I was like, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, hands. And again, you know, we see things like tonight, like the Liberty, Liberty, or Liberty are losing. However, where they are in the standings, life will go on. Um, for Washington, you got to win tonight. <laughs> you got to win Friday. To afford anything that may happen on Sunday, but it starts with tonight. <laughs> you need to be catching that plane back to DC with the dub, and and it's just that simple. Otherwise, we will see how things go. Again, like uh, you brought up, General Manager Tebow, so winning this coach of the in W history. Core, be damned. You think if this if this ends without a postseason berth, it's going to be changed regardless. It has to be changed. Like, like we're here. All up and down the, the yep. organization. Yep. <laughs> many bodies dropping. You got to look at that, too. There's just too many yep. bodies dropping and all that. So he has to. And you know now, you know, it's a little personal. His son, <laughs> son been put through the ringer. You know what I mean? And it's just uh, he, he got to get some play. He, he, he got to make some changes. But it's on them. If they ball, my guess to sustain some things. But I already know some players ain't gonna be here next year. It's just it's just facts. Oh, for sure. I, I think just like you said, from the organization wide period, there will be some folks that are just jettisoned or let go, what have you. But like you said, uh, there was just too many bodies that dropped this year. Not many teams are gonna sustain it, especially when it's key bodies falling. Mm-hmm. That said, you know we got to deal with you know feelings feelings aside. Their record is what their record is. You've had opportunities this season to where maybe you can afford, you know, some some teams have the opportunity because of what they've done the uh, to afford a loss here or there. Bottom line is you you can't afford anything is where you're at. Like, but even before the injuries, man, they, when they were healthy, they were up and down. Yep. You know what I mean? So you got to look at all that. The full season, you got to look at all that, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just, like, give it time. Give them time to get their chemistry together and all that. Uh, the only one, no, the, the, the two constants has been Psycho and Tim That's it. Well, what we will do uh, is slide over to DC United. Going to get this guy uh, going for y'all real quick. Uh, like the Mystics, we've been talking to you guys about what they've been going through. Um, they They kind of cleaned up things a little bit. To go into this game, they started underneath the playoff line. Uh, and it's, by the time this game was over, they're atop the line and trying to climb up. See the first goal of the game right here, Matthias Click with a beautiful pass to Christian Benteke. And this is this is this is just with somebody who's been here. He's been here before for a very long time. Veteran for it. I felt back, I felt bad for the defender. Uh, he's been doing that for years. Yeah, for years. For years. Yeah, for years he's been doing that. Um but a, a big a big goal and a big moment for them to start the night. Felt bad for this defender because he didn't know what was about to happen at all. But uh, very calm, cool, and collected here. Um, they needed this. You need to start strong at home. That was dope. That was it's a beautiful dope. goal. Uh, yes, it was. All the part that y'all fucked it up. But go ahead. <laughs> well, this one, this one, he goes to set up another one here. They call all sides, though. Own goal saved. They call all sides. Barely. So for Chicago, you dodge a bullet in the 13th minute. 
Um, but the fireworks will continue for DC United. Uh, you got to take Cudi Pietro. Is the player that Benteke tried to hit right here. Um, then a little bit later, he is going to connect with Ted. Uh, and Cudi Pietro is another one of those youngsters for DC um, who's been is improving steadily uh, since he's been here. Here we go. He's put the ball up over the top, and he's going to make this happen. So the little guy, don't bother me. Good yeah. pass to Cudi Pietro. They off to a run. Looks like a totally different team. It's like, why are you looking? Why are you so close to the line? Uh, interesting how that works. But um, the youngster is happy, as he should be. Uh, but Christian Bateke, again, the, the focal point here. This is what you call quality hold-up play. You put it up top. He draws two defenders. Nice, simple pass. Look, man, two touches. You got a goal. It can only, it can, it can actually be this easy at times. But there's a reason that Chicago was down here in the standings with D.C., Kudos to DC for taking advantage of it, right? Uh, we got Benteke and Cudi Pietro trying to connect again. This time it's broken up by Turan. Um, number four, you're going to see him makes a horrible mistake a little bit later. Uh, but it looked like what he ended up doing, it was just instead of it being a penalty kick, it ends up being an own goal. So that's the type of night Chicago was having. It's just a horrible night for them. They get a couple chances. Bono's about to make a nice save here. Um, they get the clean sheet, which is great for DC, something that definitely uh, gives confidence to, to your back line. That's Kai Kamara, <laughs> who's been a thorn in so many teams' sides for so, so many years. Big-time goal scorer. Uh, just couldn't get this one around the keeper. DC goes up 3-0 uh, into the half. And honestly... Chicago couldn't ever really get right. They got a couple opportunities in this game. They just never took advantage of it. Here you can see Benteke again, a little flick on the Cudi Pietro. And it goes in anyways. So that shit, that should have probably been a penalty kick. Mm -hmm. But since the ball went in, hey, man, and one. Soccer version and one. <laughs> let's get out of here. Just count it, let's get out of here. Man, that counts. <laughs> Talk to him. I don't need to see anything. No VAR here. But it was a really that nice pass. It was a really nice pass. That pass, that was, that was a bad dude right there. Very much so. And Akuti Pietro letting uh letting Benteke know that he appreciates the pass after this. Hell of a foul. Like I, I don't know what you were, you were giving up a goal here unless the keeper ends up getting a penalty, uh blocks the PK. But uh yeah, I don't know what you're looking around for. You know what you did. Uh this was pretty egregious. Uh <laughs> you fouled him on the way to fouling him. Um but this is tough. Again, DC United goes at a half up 3-0. They don't score uh, again until literally in the 89th minute, but they took care of business. They get a chance. Uh, they got a chance to jump up to eighth place. Well, they'll have a chance to jump up to eighth place this weekend when they host San Jose, if they're able to uh, get the quality result. So this is what got them from uh, this is, from 10th into 9th, getting this win. And Benteke was just raising hell all night long, as you guys can see. Oh, he's playing with them boys. Yeah. <laughs> This doesn't count. They call off sides. Uh, but they didn't – he was barely off. But, you know, timing your run is huge for a forward. Uh, it sucks when you're waiting. You're waiting, waiting for it. But, uh, yeah, he did what he wanted tonight. Uh, he passes better with his feet than most dudes pass. You know, with their hands. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to get this to the left so you guys can see the last goal because it is a quality goal. It's been Teke again. Shocker, right? Um, everyone's learning who Christian Bateke is once again. Uh, this is real nice. Barani, he he loses the ball. Couldn't pass it to Bateke because it was going to be offsides. So, regain composure. And Durkin with a beautiful pass. To, I don't know why he's wide open after the pain that he's caused you this evening. But sports, right? Sports. <laughs> you would think if there was anybody that should be marked, it would be the guy who just single-handedly ended your night. Um, so, this is... Two goals and assists on the evening. Big night for Christian Benteke. Big night for DC United. They roll with the 4-0 win. And again, as of right now, they're in ninth. They got a chance to be in eighth if they beat the San Jose Earthquake at home um, on Saturday. Also, they need Montreal to lose. So both of those things happen. But focus on them handling their business first. They get they get the result. Montreal loses. They they uh, jump Montreal. At worst case scenario, 
they get the result if they do win. Montreal wins, but you increase the distance between you and Chicago, who's trailing. And again, similar to the WNBA side of things, that bottom part of the standings that made the postseason is really hairy. Everything's within just a couple of points. We're going to take our second break. When we get back, Cardell's going to let us know what he has for Rapid Fire. You're watching the Focus TV. Welcome back to the Focus TV. Cardell, the floor is yours. What you got for us this week in Rapid Fire? Yes, sir. We're going to start on the NFL side, of course, with week one beginning. Uh, let's start with my Broncos. Um, after a disappointing 2022 season, uh, the Broncos obviously hired offensive guru Sean Payton as coach and host again, and quarterback Russell Wilson back to Pro Bowl level form. Uh, last season, Wilson threw a career low 16 touchdown passes and wasn't named to the Pro Bowl for only the second time in 11 seasons. While Wilson's play needs work, Peyton is also focusing on changing the quarter, quarterback's approach to the game. Specifically, Peyton believes Wilson was too focused on his brand last year and needs to get back to focusing on football, according to ESPN's Seth Wickersham. In the story published Tuesday, Wickersham mentions a blunt piece of criticism that Peyton gave Wilson to sum up what he needs to change. Quote, will you effing stop kissing all the babies? Peyton reportedly told Wilson, you're not running for public office. Oh. Uh, what are your thoughts on the blunt, uh, <laughs> very direct uh, message to Russell Wilson entering this season? I'm gonna start with you, Octavia. I mean, I don't blame him. <laughs> I mean, I think that there is probably some type of cloudiness or gray area that Russell Wilson, I was gonna say Russell Westbrook because of W, Russell Wilson can have in a blur between being a professional football player and being a celebrity. Um, he has, to me, as far as in the NFL, has a higher celebrity profile, yes, because of his wife. And it just makes for a bigger story, not even just because of his wife, than his wife's ex it's just a lot. So pretty much anything that he does can be considered some type of celebrity gossip or whatever you would say more so than even to me, like the, the, the biggest star in the NFL is Patrick Mahomes, but you don't hear half of the stuff that you hear about Russell Wilson that, that you do about Patrick mm -hmm. Mahomes. So I mean, in that aspect, I can understand where Sean Payton is saying, he's like, bro, I need you to remember that you are a football player first that you need to be in the playbook. I don't need you doing TikTok videos all day long, like stuff like that, that I feel like that maybe more celebrities outside of the athletic realm of it would be into. And I think that he, it makes sense. Cause I mean, like, I don't think I heard Russell Wilson say Bronco city, let's, let's ride or Broncos country, let's ride at all this year. I don't think I heard that because I feel like that was also another type of branding that he was trying to do as well. So, yeah, I, I agree with it. And maybe he needs somebody blunt to tell it to him that way. You know, like everybody has a different way of understanding stuff. Maybe Russ's has, hand has been a little bit held in his past where he is kind of used to getting his way or, or whatever you want to say in the past, which is kind of why you hear things from, when he was in Seattle, you know, uh, previous teammates and coaches have said certain things like, you know, it's about himself or whatever you want to say. So I think it's good. You know, I don't think Sean Page should have it. Like, he don't have no cut cards for anybody. He has no reason to tiptoe around Russell because between the two of them, we know who has the higher profile as far as football. It's Sean Payton. So I don't, I don't see nothing wrong with it. He probably needs some more tough love like that. So. Hopefully it helps him. You know, I don't think that he's going to have, I'm not as worried about him as maybe others are. And maybe it's because I'm, you know, maybe I'm not biased with that, but I feel like a lot of people, a lot of media has given us such a hard time because he had a down year last year. Like he's lost it completely. Like granted it was bad, but we, I mean, Nathaniel Hackey was bad. I'm sorry. Like he was really bad. Like, even watching him in Hard Knocks this year, I'm like, he's weird. So I can't understand how that all happened anyway. Like, 
I can understand it. So for me to just think that Russ just completely fell off one year after the 10 plus years in the league that he's been a top quarterback, I just don't believe it. And I think with him getting with Sean, it'll change a lot of things. And I think he'll be back to close, maybe not what he was in the past, but he'll be close to what he was. And I think he'll have a good season. I don't think the whole narrative that we have right now around Russ will continue. Um, that's just my thoughts. The reason why you haven't seen Broncos last ride or heard that because in Broncos country, when you don't get it done, they yell back, shut the up. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Um, is an adult in the room, man. It's time for all the BS out the window. Like, uh, Everything that happened last year, obviously Hackett plays a big role, you know, somehow members of the media somehow remember to omit this man's failures because when other people come up short, uh, they like to remind, they like to remind everybody. Uh, then that was a big moment, which he failed in. You're, get a guy, right? Get a guy in charge. It happened under your watch. It was a dumpster fire. It's Sean Payton letting Russ know, whatever it may be. Like I said, you brought up some of the stuff along with Russ and, you know, we seen Russ go from what the, the the mid the mid round uh you know the third round quarterback from Seattle you know put the work in one one a chip yeah all all that stuff to now and you know he has his brand and all that other stuff like uh Cardell talks about this all the time just keeping the main thing the main thing and Sean Payton bless his heart reminding Russell Wilson keep the main thing the main thing um and clearly also um whatever happened last year and Sean Payton's also Say this, you know, we talked, what is it, maybe a month ago when he kindly fired. It wasn't even a subtle shot at Nathaniel Hackett. Just let everybody know there's an adult here. Uh, we will do things under under, uh, under the rules of being serious from here on. Just a nice little thing to let Russell know what time it is. I think Russ knows, but just a reminder. And Sean Payton just came back in the coach. He's not about to waste his time for something to go wrong. And I'm here for all of it. Man, you know I love it. Uh, that's, my, that's my style of coaching, direct. You know, you won't hear my mouth if you're getting it done. When you're not getting it done and you focusing on other things, you won't hear my mouth. Because, uh, see, uh, this is <laughs> this is win or loss business. If you don't win, you're going to lose your job. <laughs> you know, it's just as simple as that. And uh, people got families, man. And a lot of guys are depending on Russell Wilson to do his job. Like those wide receivers last year, they were getting missed a lot. It's going to be hard to go to the negotiating table and demand the money that they probably would deserve if the ball was there and they were able to catch it, but they weren't. You see what I'm saying? Uh, it's a trickle-down effect. It's, it's the ultimate team game. So I applaud him for, for letting the guy know because if he let the guy know, that's going to trickle down to the rest of the team. Yeah, let me put my phone down. I can't do that commercial. Uh, yo, groupie girl, I get up with you week eight instead of next week. You know what I'm saying? It, it just it, – it's it, – you handle your business, man. And I just feel like we in a time because of social media, everybody is in brand mode. They don't even know how to be themselves. They just worried about brand 24 seven, even when they don't have a brand, you see what I'm saying? Which it makes it even more wild. And then you add in the fact that the Sierra factor, his wife, the, the, you know, the, the superstar singer and stuff, of course that's going to be in it, but Russell can control it. And I feel like Russ got caught up in that last year, not just with his wife, but overall the hype and stuff, the excitement. And he forgot, though. You got you got to put the work in. You see what I'm saying? And I, um, I think in the last dance, Michael Jordan had a great quote. He was just like, "My game sold all this stuff, sold sold my marketing, built my brand." He said, "If I was averaging four points and two rebounds, nobody would have came and offered me anything." So his game did all the talking and built him up to where he is now. People got to remind that, like, if you get it done, your brand will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. Like Patrick Mahomes. You, I'll tell you, made a great point. He's not even the dude. I'm watching a little quarterback series and stuff. He's not even the dude that wants to be in the limelight, but he is in the limelight because they win the Super Bowls and he's dominating. And he only had to try because he's just out there in Kansas City of all places. So it goes to show you, man, when you when you getting it done and you winning, all that will take care of itself, man. I think that's what Sean Payton tried to reaffirm and, and Russell Wilson. Like, you got to get back to that. That Super Bowl you won in Seattle, that was a long ass time ago. You know what I'm saying? You coming off a hell of a year where it was just chaos. So right now, that's that's what it is. And you gotta change that. Otherwise, uh, you know how I go in, in you know, Denver, man. Get you about it there, dog. You know what I'm saying? It's, look, 
if Elway can get up out of out of that front office, even though it was quiet, if he can get up out of that front office, bro, she can go too. It's just it's just it's a standard, bro. We, we not playing with that. And then here's the thing: you went Denver now, right? So you gotta understand there's another powerful figure in Colorado right now that's making waves. See what I'm saying? Coming out with a bang. So if they keep winning, they're going to be looking at you like, what the hell? Like, you're not even the best quarterback in, in the state. The damn sad to something. Like, they're going to say that. Like, it's going to get there. And it's going to get disrespectful. So, yeah, right. stop all the cute stuff, man. Just just get back to football. And you win games, all that will go away. It's as simple as that. Uh, moving on to uh, the next one. We're going to stay. We're going to stay on football, but move to the college side of things. So, speaking of Colorado. Uh, expectations for Colorado quarterback Shador Sanders were fairly high after his impressive run playing for, uh, obviously, his father, Deion Sanders, at Jackson State. Of course, as with any high-profile transfer up from the FCS to FBS Power 5 level, questions remain about how he will handle a higher level of competition. Based on one game against last year, college football playoff runner-up, Sanders has provided some strong answers. Sanders broke the Buffalo single-game passing yard record in his debut, throwing for 510 yards and four touchdowns in the 45-42 win. When asked about the difference he felt in opponents playing his first FBS game, he largely downplayed things beyond the athleticism of the defensive lines and the depth of talent. Quote, the only difference between FCS and this level is the D-line get off the blocks if you try to scramble up faster. Everything else, you've got good players, good DBs, good receivers, everything like that. You just have more of those on the field at once, said Sanders at the win. Everybody in the field ain't going first round. A lot on the field may not get drafted. So people fear names. I don't fear names because I really don't care. When you fear names, that's half the battle. Wilson, what are your thoughts on young Sanders' thoughts, uh, you know, on you know first taste of FBS play? And, uh, you know, it's probably about people focusing on names too much, and uh, that isn't the end-all, be-all. You got to show and prove regardless. So I'm like somebody raised by, by somebody who comes from the time that we grew up watching folks. Um, I'm not shocked in the least bit about it, by any of this at all. He was cooking up on that level he was playing at, and people just being super disrespectful. However, you know, I hate to be that person. They put up more resistance on that level y'all don't respect, but I'm going to leave that alone. TCU, he ain't throw for 500 on that level that y'all just acting like, you know, don't respect or whatever. However, against you folks, 510 yards, I'm going to be real honest. <laughs> You take away five drops, you talk about 650 right now. Like it, it would have been even more disrespectful. There were drops. It wasn't, it wasn't defense. It was drops. And I know some people were like, you know, like well, it wasn't the same TCU team that, you know, all the players went there. Man, I don't care. Like, you got a number next to your name. It is what it is. Did anybody say anything quiet when Duke did what they did to Clemson? No, nah, we gave Duke their credit, and that's that. So I, I'm going to keep the same energy. TCU had a number on them. It was in TCU's building, and everyone was laughing, y'all. You go to the portal, you get all that. Bro, they have, they have a quarterback and a wide receiver that's going to be playing on Sundays. I don't care whether you like them, don't like them. I'm not too bright. But in this age where people don't play defense in college outside of the SEC, if you have a quarterback and a receiver that are going to be oh, playing oh, on Sundays. Well, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, that receiver, you talking about uh, – uh... Uh, right, kids that play both ways, yeah. Travis, right? That damn running back gonna be playing on Sundays too. Oh yeah, well, the only reason I, I didn't mention him because he was a freshman right now. Oh, but, oh yeah, I get what you. I, I got you. That's the only reason I mentioned him. Got you. That's a because bad it's about dude. to be Shadur and then Travis, or if he stays a year, Shadur and Travis leaving together, either or. But right. little young and a running back showing out bro, all bro. those kids. And then it was the other one. I think number ten, the wide receiver with the dress. Yeah, yeah. Look, all I'm gonna say is this. <laughs> TCU and all that other stuff. You luck. <laughs> you lucky this is a year two. Cause all you show, you got TCU people looking like. I'm anxious <laughs> to see what the portal's about to look like after this first year of Colorado playing. I'm not gonna lie, I'm just gonna be real honest. Because you know how embarrassing it is to me. Like, this is Texas, it's a tough place to play. They come from Colorado. It's like when you go play, you know, in Colorado with the altitude, whatever. The advantage for you, Texas. In Florida schools, bro, that heat's different. I'm gonna be yeah. real honest, that heat's different. If you grow up in it, you're used to it, it is an advantage. This dude played 175,000 snaps. <laughs> Talk about Travis, in that weather, 
and they were more conditioned to, than your team, more well coached than your team, and they just got here. So have the same energy you would have. And shout out to my guy Emery Hunt because he's had the same energy since Shadur got to Jackson State. He was talking about Shadur in high school. If this was somebody else, I've heard, I've seen worse quarterbacks talked about who've done less than what the kid did the other day. It's the real deal, dog. Take the name out of it. Who cares? And in terms of what he said, I wouldn't for anybody either. The kid clearly puts the work in. Everyone loves when people go and vouch for folks or whatever. If Tom Brady was working with somebody else, somebody else's, some other young quarterback and stamped them, y'all would have definitely remembered and been paying attention to him and everything else. So I don't have time to be here for this situation. All of a sudden be like, oh my God, look at Shadur Sanders. Where, where you been? And yeah, I agree with I agree with the kid what the kid said. How can we tell him it's wrong? And also, you can look around the country. Um uh, the last what the last five, six years, and it's been happening a while, but I'm talking about in terms of like widespread it is now with look at what JUCO's putting out across sports. Like they've been doing it for forever. But right now, when they open the portal up, it's different now. The portal open up. And why would I get you who has to come learn how to be a man? When I could just tell some grown men to come walk through this door and let's boogie. That's God ship on that show that's angry off the break. Been mad the whole time, and you might get an opportunity to <laughs> hey, come here, come here to Boulder. <laughs> get up here on this field. I know you went through what you went through the last two, three years. Here. But no, nah, I'm not surprised in the least bit. I don't think they're gonna win. I'm not, I don't think they're gonna compete for a championship, anything like that. Like it's year one, trying to reestablish yourself. However, Having this in 12, in 10, in 3, in your back pocket, in a conference that doesn't, it, that's never been known for their defense, they should be okay. Get some good hands. I'll tell you. Yeah, I mean, I think Wilson said it all. I mean, even before getting on Shador when you were talking about Travis Hunter, I mean, I don't know how many snaps he played in the game, but, I mean, homeboy said he'd go out there and play a whole nother game after this. He was like, I could have played another game on Saturday. Like, that's just kind of wild. So, I mean, like, you don't see stuff like that that serious to play, you know, snaps on both offense and defense in a game. <laughs> and like you said, it doesn't matter, like, the whole, oh, it's not the same TCU team. It's a ranked opponent. It's the first game of the season. There's been all of these talks all off season about what it's going to be, what it's not going to be. And they went out there and proved it. I mean, granted, to me, it was a really good game. Like, And personally, I don't even really watch – college football like that but I saw this game with TV I was like let me take a look <laughs> and it didn't disappoint and I mean like you said Shador Stevens uh Stevens uh, Sanders he sounded like his daddy's son like that's that that everything he said it sounded like something Dion would say so it doesn't surprise me at all that he's not intimidated by anybody he doesn't care what anybody has to say about him what they think about him he knows the type of player that he is and he's just now showing y'all um I'm just excited for the season to keep going because I, I want to see how it continues because you know how fast people change and switch up on you when stuff doesn't look like how it will look the first week if if, the, if it goes that way or if it continues to go back, who's still going to say something? Like, I feel like that's really what I'm interested to see what's going to happen next. But those core four players that you guys just described, like, it, it was just wow. It was just crazy. Um, so I'm not surprised at all. Um, and yeah, maybe we need a backup in Philadelphia, so maybe we'll come over to us. No, I don't know. I like nice things. <laughs> no, nah, you're gonna be high, but uh, you know, look, my take from it is um, the reason why we're not used to seeing Travis one do that is because Dion is an old school coach. Um, where you practice hard and then you'll be able to duplicate that in the game. Whereas now it's kind of like, we don't want to hurt the kids feelings. And, and then I'm like, Oh, fuck you. You can go. You can go. Like we ain't even got time. I'm not even going to try to figure you out. You can go. This is going, this is the demand. This is the standard. You either with it, you're not. And if you ain't with it, cool. Have to pack your bags. You can bounce. It's as simple as that. I, I also saw an interview with Dion said because he did it, he knows exactly how to coach Travis up to do it, including because he's expending so much energy on Saturdays, he gives Travis an extra day off. 
See, a lot of coaches don't understand that because they never did it. It's a lot of energy being expended. So they have not practiced the regular schedule and wonder why he breaks down later. No, nah, you need you need time to recuperate, but then Wednesday you back on the field. You know what I'm saying? Getting ready for Saturday. You know what I'm saying? And he he said, I trust Travis to do that because I know what I'm gonna get on Saturday. I know he a dog. You see what I'm saying? So, so he can play both ways, but he also knows how much energy expands. Also, I love Shador's uh, you know, stance on like, man, I don't I don't trip off names and stuff because he understands that none of that matters at the end of the day. You got when you step between the lines, y'all all equal because y'all on the same damn field anyway. You know what I mean? Uh, and in and, and, and Jackson, they won a lot of games with a lot of Juco guys. You see what I'm saying? Those are his friends. Those are going to be lifelong friends. So I think he has a healthy respect for every level of college, uh, you know what I'm saying, because he had to play with all that. He went to war with all those guys, and he realized his talent everywhere. And it, it's a, a term that I saw a brother use on Twitter. Uh, he called it a white gaze. Whereas these guys been doing all this work at the at the HBCU level, basically the black level, let's call it what they, you know, the, the masses think. He went to Colorado, do the same thing. And it's like, oh, man, they're very good. They've been doing this. Why do you think it was such an uproar when they left Jackson State? They knew, everybody knew what was leaving. You see what I'm saying? And that's what made us angry when it was like, homie, fine, we knew eventually he was going to leave, but finish the job at least. You see what I'm saying? And it was like, I truly believe, and I always believe this. I feel like Dion was so big and, and that whatever happens at Colorado, whatever heights he reached, he could have reached that at Jackson State because he's Dion. And what people don't understand is when they say there'll be somebody else, he's the only one of that. that he's the only, it's only one Dion though. It's just only one. Just like it's only one Ali. It's, 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 it's certain people. Where it's only one with the charisma, the know-how, but the work ethic. Like he ain't did nothing to build all that up. You see what I'm saying? That's why I hurt so much. But not, not, nonetheless, we've seen this happen at Jackson State. So him going to Colorado, I mean, it's not a shock. It's just not a shock. It's just a matter of, um, to me, how well the others was going to play. But the people that, that's that been under Deion, I knew they was going to bowl. I, like, you know, and, and I saw an interview with uh, Deion Sanders, Edwards. He played for Deion in youth league. See, they don't understand that. Like, they think Deion just popped up. He's been coaching – a lot of these kids since they were little kids, you know what I'm saying? He's he been coaching 20 years. This is in, he knows exactly what to do. Building things, feeding kids, doing all the necessary things to build them up. So when he get to college, it's easy work because he got more resources to work with than he all these years preparing to get to this level. He's been there. He's been what I call the trenches. So he's proven. So it's only a matter of time. Because like they said, it was a lot of recruits at that TCU game. Oh, best believe they, nope. TCU's off my list. What's up, Prime? What's up, Coach Prime? Yeah, I'm interested. Let me come up there. It's just facts. It's just facts because one thing you know about that, because of those – and I watched the practices. I went after the game, went and watched the practices. He got them boys working. He got those boys working. And where other – where else in the damn country outside of probably like Nick Saban or something like that, but even then, where you can go practice – and it ain't your head coach is not just a Hall of Famer. You got Warren Sapp and all these other Hall of Famers coming to help you out and give you game. Just like that. You're not going to get that nowhere else, man, that teacher. And even Warren Sapp said, you know what you're getting right here? Even that, That's even better at the NFL level? He said, these, these coaches are actually teaching these players. They teaching them how to play. And that's the thing. That's why when they get in the trenches and stuff like that, they're going to be better. And this is just game one. They're going to keep getting better. Like Wilson, I'm not expecting them to win the national championship. You know what I'm saying? But it's going that that momentum coming, and and I'm pretty sure the football world can feel it. So when down the line they rumbling with the Alabamas of the world and beating them, don't don't act like you don't know. But I love what he said, man, because you got to respect it. It's a lot of things that stigma. It's like that on the basketball side, especially here in the DMV. Guys will throw out players with names all damn day, and it's just like I don't give a damn about his name, man. Like let me see his game. Let me see if he can really ball. And most of the time, a lot of these people are, are false advertising. They don't, they're not as good as their name. They play for a program, they're on the friends and family plan, they being pushed through because of who they know. It's all that the Kennedy League. All we like, I wish Wade was on here because he'll confirm it, man. Had everybody from Georgetown Transfer Ish and all those guys all the way down to the NFI. And they serving all these pros and big time high school and college guys, and we serve and get us a championship game. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to hear that. Either you can ball or you can't. Either you got hard or you don't. Either you're a smart player or you're not. 
And that's what you see in that Colorado. And he's only going to get more of those players. And then it's going to get real interesting. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and then, um, you know, I'm loving what I'm, I'm loving what I'm seeing. It, you know, look, people got to understand. I think for most of the people in our community, we already knew this about them. Again, we were just hoping they would do it and uplift our shit to this level. You see what I'm saying? And that's the white gay statement I'm talking about as far as what Tony Morrison uh, wrote. She basically was saying what uh, the standouts in our community feel like they got to go to the white side of things to get validation or to feel uh, 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 to get validation and feel that they really made it and feel that they're good. When really the whole time you were that good. You were that good with us. You don't need their validation. And, and sadly, a lot of our people feel like that's the best. You have to do that. And it's sad and, and, and it's sad and unnecessary when history shows the greatest, some of the greatest players that ever came in the game. Like to me, the greatest football player is Jerry Rice. Where he come from? You see what I'm saying? So we can go all along the, down the line, man. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is, man. So when Shadour and Arnold gets in the NFL, don't try to leave out that they started at Jackson State and they're Colorado and all. Nope. Make sure that's in the bio as well. Well, I was going to say just real quick, my bad add on for you. Move on. Uh, also, the story can't be told when the, the first, the biggest piece of the puzzle happened when uh, the coup that was Travis Hunter. Travis yeah. Hunter oh, wasn't man. one at Colorado. He, <laughs> Travis Hunter was one at Jackson State. Let's play in the country in his recruiting class was one by an HBCU. What, like you said, what the heck do you think is going to happen we, with more resources and whatnot? They think multiple things can be true. A lot of us don't like the fact that he left and how he left, right? Cool. And, and, and you can acknowledge that. Here, those two things, like the first part, that shouldn't mean that the second part, which is he's going to fail here where there's infinite more resources at his disposal. You know, that just, just from a logic, like <laughs> two things can be true. Like people gotta stop and also like you said outside of your Bamas and your Georgias name me three staffs better than what he has over there coaching wise because I don't think people get that part of it I was watching a couple like uh like uh like uh like an NFL folks just breaking down Colorado's game film they are in awe of I can't, I'm so sorry I don't know the man's name their offensive coordinator's name he is messing NFL concepts with like air raid stuff so effortlessly like, it is beautiful. Like, this is some beautiful mind stuff happening. But it's be because of the, the NFL stuff. And like you said, they're getting prepared for Sunday. Like, pre, like really prepared. Not, I went to college and now I should be ready. And, oh, my God, I get to rookie minicamp. And what the hell is going on? Everything's so fast. Bro, they're learning tricks of the trade for if they get there. Like, that's a whole different thing right there. And I don't think people get it. Again, new team. They had six penalties in a hostile environment in they first game together. Six. And Dion was mad about that. He said they're gonna run gases for those for that. Six. He's a man of excellence. And, and that, you made you made a good point. The coaching staff, they're preparing them for the NFL. Players talk. Guess what? When these group of players get to the NFL and they keep talking to recruits and stuff like that, hey man, go play. He's gonna get you ready. If you're serious. You gonna get to the NFL. He's gonna have you ready, dog. I don't care what position. He's gonna have you ready, dog. If you really want this, but it's up to you. That's what I'm saying. And he has no, and it's clear he has no patience for dogs. His sons are gonna be dogs. Even Shiloh, Shiloh was blasting dudes. Sometimes Shiloh get out of position because all he want to do is some smack dudes. Like, and I like that about him. He's different than his pop. You know how they said about his father, pop saying tackle man. Shiloh different. Shiloh don't win that interception. He want he want to send you to the hospital. He different. You see what I'm saying? So, and Dion understands like I got to coach him different. Like he said, Shadour cool, so I could just talk to him. She's like Shiloh be on the edge, so he like he got to come at him different ways and stuff. And he didn't even acknowledge it about his sons and stuff like that. But you also gotta understand, Dion was a dog. Come on, man, that man went hunting for Jerry Rice. He went hunting for Michael Irvin and Chris Carter. Ain't too many DBs hunting for those brothers. So that's all he know. He shut down half a side of a field. You quarterbacks ain't even look over there. You see what I'm saying? So he's gonna make sure he he can only tolerate a certain type of player. And once he gets a lot of those, it's gonna be trouble. And now I don't know how things gonna shake up moving forward because all these damn college football mess up. The, the, the conference are being realigned. Everybody moving to different conferences and stuff. 
who knows where Colorado may be down the line and stuff like that. It'd be would it it'd be dope if he moved to the SEC. That'd be dope. I'm like, man, it's really on now. But you wanna know what the scary part is? If I'm one of the other conferences, that's what scares me. I would be worried about. No, I'm I'm so honest, right? Because right now he's up there taking your plays from across the country. If the realignment happens and you move that man a little bit more centrally, you get close to the SEC country, boy, it's it now you're gonna have folks that, that, that be like at Bama, backups at Bama and Georgia be like, Why am I sitting here? Because let's be real. Look, I look. I keep it real. Nick Saban is a great coach, but Dion speaks my language, man. If you're a black player, I I I, I get like he he understand my mama, and I'm, I'm I ain't play well because my mama's struggling back home. She can't pay the rent and stuff like that and all that. He gets that. I don't know Nick Saban quite understand it like Dion did that. So Dion know what to do to help me with that, so I get my mind back on business here. You see what I'm saying? And that's an NFL Hall of Fame, one of the greatest ever do it phone call text message away so i know he know what the, he talking about not just for here even in the future where i'm trying to get to not saying nick ain't get him there and all that but it's, it's true, just man. things you don't know unless you experience it you don't know how i feel to play on sunday you know how to coach it on sunday he don't know how to feel to be on that field so the players that that's the edge man that's the edge and that's why they've been scared of former players to come in and get in those positions and stuff that know how to coach because then that's going to make these other guys obsolete. they like, hey, why we need you? And even my last thing, my bad, and I shut up about this, the, about the part with Travis taking care of his body. Do y'all play baseball and football? Like, we talk about this time where, you know, athletes, with all the everything going on today, everyone's always not holding up. As well. cold. Yeah, like, bro, you know, the wealth of information, you were playing both them sports in, in that time? Well? <laughs> exceedingly well yeah they did a whole documentary on 33 people need to watch that but it goes by what you said coaching staff and i get what he's saying when you got the information you got blueprints you got secrets to help these players grow once they see you got that or they run through a brick wall for you because they know like i've been looking for this because a lot of coaches these days are playing coaching they acting like they know they don't really know but that's that they know so it's only a matter of time because when he really fill out the roster, because, like, think about it. You think it's that well with Dion to give up 40 points? He's a defensive player. Like, that's against his religion. Like, hold on, I'm used to dudes not even throwing to my side of the field. We gave him 40 points. And he said that. He's like, oh, we ain't played well defensively. We, we got we got to get what we trying to go. We got to clean that up. So so think about it, man. It, it, it's, on, it's coming. It's only a matter of time. It's on you, Will. All right, well, look, man, uh, it's it's been a fun week it's been a fun show look forward to see what happens between now and the next time we talk to you what i can guarantee is october we'll have we'll be telling you guys instead of previewing we'll be recapping the first week of nfl action in the nfc east so look forward to that we'll we'll definitively know by the next time we talk to you whether the mystics are in or out of the postseason these are things i, I can guarantee that we'll know by the next time we speak and then, you know, we'll give you an update on what DC United is doing. They still got a little bit more time. Um, you know, the, the window is still a little bit open there. But thank you for tuning in. As always, don't forget to get over to thefocustv.com. And also, if you have a Roku television or device, uh, in the search box, just type in the Focus TV, double tap OK. Add the channel and you're free. It's, it's that easy to watch this show every Wednesday as early as 9 a.m. Then anything else we have going on, such as Mystics and Wizards Outlet, that will be coming sooner be, soon because it's that time of year when everything starts again. Y'all have a great week. This has been the Focus TV.